The first step is to install the Nexus 7 tablet into the holder. It slides like that. Now next we power it on. There's an on button on the top of the screen. We hold that down. The Google logo comes up. And at the same time we can connect the USB connection. Uh, note that it's um, opposite in orientation to what you would expect. The upside is facing the other side of the tablet. We'll wait for the tablet to boot. So the tablet has booted. It's delivered in an unlocked mode. Go to hit the app. That, that gets pulls up the apps. And then we go to Mobile 3D. That's the name of our app. We select that. And we answer yes to allow the Mobile 3D to access the USB device. There's no need to select the uh, default, so we go OK. And now the camera will warm up. So while the camera is warming up, uh, note that there's a slider bar across the bottom indicating the progress of that. There's also another uh, metric here, scene fitness. So when you start a scan, you want to make sure that there is some that the scene fitness is is uh, got some value here. I can, I can disable that. We'll go up to a blank wall here. And the scene fitness. This is a, the worst case for a scanner. Blank wall. You got. You know, we have no scene fitness. Even though we're getting some pixels, no scene fitness. So we have to have some stuff in the scene. Some geometry. Uh, here we have three intersecting planes plus some uh, features in the scene. So scene fitness is quite good. So we'll just wait for the. We can't. Okay. So now. Once the camera has warmed up, we can hit the start button and start scanning. The, uh, the warm-up can take uh, uh, 15 minutes or so uh, the first time you switch this on, so be prepared for that. Don't, don't, don't rush the warm-up period. It, uh, it affects the uh, device's ability to have a good depth uh, resolution. So. We'll get started with that. I'm going to back up and we're going to have a look at our calibration wall here. You can see we've uh, surveyed in all of these targets. And I'm going to start, the way we start scanning is we hit the start button. Okay. So there we can see that we have some pixels that are colored green. That's indicative of dense, high quality data. Around like that. It's usually a, a good practice to rotate gently around the scene and, and get a, with a, almost like a washing motion to get good data. So we're going to finish our first scan like that. And it's writing it to disk. You can see that we have uh, captured that first uh, data. We didn't see the uh, this uh, Dremel case is sitting on top of a table. We don't have the table leg. It just looks like it's floating out there in space. That table leg is actually a very shiny stainless steel, not a good surface for any imaging device to catch. OK, so um, next step, we'll export that data. This is the save function. So we're going to export. I'm going to choose a file name. Uh, we'll call that demo. One. I'll set that. These files are always uh, date stamped. Um, I'm going to choose a format of DP binary. That's our uh, native file format. We could have chosen um, XYZ intensity RGB or PTX. The XYZ I RGB is uh, is the PTS file. But we'll go with our DP binary, and we're going to save the scene get an, a message, the scene has not been optimized, save anyway, yes, we're going to save it the first time in unoptimized form. And this is being written to the uh, solid state disk for it pretty quick. Um, next, uh, mindful of that optimization I'm going to, or that, that we didn't do, I'm going to hit the optimize button, which is OPT, and we're going to do a global optimization of this. And 
we'll see the post processing. Okay, so that that's quick. And now we're going to save this again by going hitting export. We're going to save it in DP. I'm going to change the enter file name. I'm going to go demo one. Um, OPT indicating it was optimized. So we'll go and again we'll save that. So you can see, actually you probably can't see it flash too quickly, but this file has been saved to the uh, SD storage device on the tablet. We can access that by connecting this USB by connecting the USB cable to the USB cable on your uh, laptop or PC, and this device will look like. Uh, unattached storage device. So that's the, those are the basics of getting uh, simple scan data um, from the DP, uh, DPI-7 uh, imager. Hit the apps button again. The device comes preloaded with uh, the file manager application. If you don't see that, you have to go to the Google Play Store and download it. It's free. We've got a file manager. And we've created a directory called Point Clouds. The machine comes uh, provisioned with that to, to begin with. There's point clouds, and you can see I've got a whole bunch of files, but here's the demo one DP file and the demo one optimized PT file, each uh, about a megabyte. And you can see the date, July 31st, uh, 2013, at uh, 610 and 611. Here we show you how to connect the DPI imager to your laptop to get the files. Here you can see just plugging in US, using the USB cable which is also used for power. When you do that, the your laptop should automatically find the, the uh, file management program from the DPI-7 and you should then be able to see the directories on the DPI-7 and you can look for point clouds, which is our default of where we store the point clouds that you say. And you should be able to then retrieve those right to your laptop. Here we show you how to save and export into other file formats besides our DP format. Going to the export tab, Selecting the various formats, XYZ, ASCII, Cyclone PTS format are examples. And so you can give it another file name uh, in this new format. And so similarly as before, just enter the different file name uh, under that format that you're exporting. And then select the format, make sure it's the format that you want. And then you may go ahead and save the exported format to the SD card drive uh, on the tablet. And then you may retrieve it as shown.